Halo Season 2 was recently released on Paramount+, Plus, and after watching the first three episodes, I decided to do a review. Season 1 was, safe to say, rough around the edges. Even with mixed reviews, I'm still rooting for the show and its success. The UNSC is on its heels, with inevitable Covenant attack on Reach, a key mining world and strategic stronghold for humanity. How will Master Chief respond? Let's check it out. I have to be upfront. The show loosely follows the source material, and one of the biggest criticisms is Master Chief. In the video games, Master Chief, or John 117, is a super soldier augmented by the Spartan 2 program. He's larger than life, and is regarded as one of the greatest video game characters of all time. The show, sadly, removes the mystique by not only removing Master Chief's helmet, but also making him more human. He gets romantically involved with someone, and can be emotionally unstable when things don't go his way. Oh, sir. Take your hand off me. I saw Cobalt's flight plan. I, Chief. I saw it. They changed it. Come on, Chief. Why do you think he's here? Oh, I can't listen to this. Where do you think you're going? Who's your friend? I don't need a friend, Betty Officer. I need a Spartan. 125, you are not dismissed. In comparison to the games, I can't remember a time where Master Chief ever lost his cool and had to pull rank just to get someone to do something. People refer to him as Master Chief because they look up to him, revering him in some sense. He doesn't talk much, but when he does, there's always substance and a level of importance that inspire those around him. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. I'm sorry, Chief, but how have you ever failed? I should have protected Cortana. Stopped everything from going wrong. I failed her. I will not fail you. I like Pablo Schreiber as Master Chief. I just hope he's able to flesh out the character more in the upcoming episodes. Jen Taylor is back, reprising her role as Cortana, and I absolutely love it. I didn't mind Cortana's look in Season 1. In fact, I thought it was appropriate. She came across as warm, intelligent, and her compassion towards John really showed on screen. For whatever reason, the studio decided to change Cortana's look for Season 2. And I don't know how I feel about it. When smart AI like Cortana are created, they can choose their own appearance and even change color depending on their mood. So Season 2's design makes sense in some regard, I suppose. I do appreciate Cortana's uniform though. It's a nod to her look in Halo Infinite. For me personally, I'm a fan of her look in Halo 4. For reasons. Come on, Chief. Take a girl for a ride. Season 2 has wonderful set pieces, and the action scenes involving the Covenant are gritty, unrestrained, an improvement over Season 1. The foreboding threat of invasion hints at a favorable storyline with the promise to deliver on all fronts. The first three episodes, however, suffer from severe pacing issues. The highs and lows were just too much, as I struggled with most of the supporting characters. It seemed like the writers had a difficult time deciding what to do with them. They're good enough actors in their own right, but more often than not, they're obstacles, roadblocks, hindering not only Master Chief, but the show's true potential. The amount of different subplots going on is more than I would have liked, and I hope it will all culminate into something worthwhile in the end. Nevertheless, there is one character who stands out in Season 2. Joseph Morgan delivers a solid performance as ONI director James Ackerson. Ackerson's ruthlessness and ambition serve as good conflict, driving a wedge between Master Chief and the rest of the UNSC. For those of you wondering about Dr. Halsey, she's relegated to a chair for the first three episodes. I'm not kidding. A chair. <laughs>